And welcome to Enzyme Mental. I'm Jason Carter. You already know that the body uses fat to store and manage energy, but these are just two of many responsibilities that fat executes because our body actually contains more than one kind of fat. In fact, there are at least three primary types of fat, and they're often represented as brown fat, white fat, and beige fat. So how are these fat types different, and how do they function? White fat is the type that stores energy, and white fat is what we target when we're trying to lose weight. Brown fat is dense with mitochondria and natural iron, and this is what gives brown fat both its dark color and incomparable metabolic power. Brown fat actually burns energy to generate heat. Brown fat contains a protein called thermogenin, and thermogenin is the primary force behind brown fat's tremendous energy expenditure. Brown fat is especially activated in cold temperatures. When we enter a cold environment, brown fat actually burns white fat to maintain the body's core temperature. Infants naturally have far more brown fat than adults, as the brown fat keeps us warm and safe as we enter an uncertain postpartum world. Specifically, brown fat is there to shield the infant from hypothermia, which is often a serious problem for babies born prematurely. There's also beige fat, which adults seem to have much more of than brown. Beige fat functions like the stubborn white fat until we begin exercising and or enter a cold environment. When we exercise, our muscles produce a hormone called irisin, which converts beige fat to brown fat and inhibits the formation of fatty tissue. Supplements like flushing niacin, the bioflavonoid quercetin, berberine, and the mitochondria-boosting supernutrient PQQ all support healthy levels of brown fat, but not nearly as much as regular exercise. One potential dark side to brown fat is its indication as a possible cause of the rapid weight loss and overall gradual wasting in patients with advanced forms of cancer. This gradual wasting is medically known as cachexia, and it accounts for as much as one-third of all cancer deaths. The systemic inflammation of the cancer drives a significant increase in the conversion of white fat to brown and consequently leads to increased energy consumption and eventual organ degradation. Also, before you rush to overproduce your body's brown fat, consider this. This is one situation where you can certainly have too much of a good thing. An excess of brown fat would immediately burn all the calories you consumed, rather than ordinarily depositing the glucose from those calories in your tissues for storage. This is an actual medical condition, although thankfully it's exceptionally rare. Fat cells are highly adaptive, and the body has evolved this way as a necessity for survival because, let's remember, us humans have lived with the constant and brutal reality of frequent food shortage for most of our existence. Cold temperatures are indeed exceptional for increasing metabolism and consequently fat burning, and this is one reason why procedures like cool sculpting are so popular. But before you lock yourself in a walk-in freezer, try committing to some form of daily exercise instead. As just one benefit among many, regular exercise improves metabolic efficiency, meaning that your body utilizes the calories you take in far more effectively than someone who is sedentary. Remember that it's the exercise you perform each day that makes the biggest difference. So get up and get moving. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.